So it's ten minutes to four. Should we do the hustle? Yes. Oh. Mm-mm. You posed the question, and I thought, well, if you want to do the hustle, then clearly this has to come into people's mind. Otherwise, we're just going to play it all the way through. Actually, that would be quite what through the review. Yeah. Are you serious? No, I'm not. Okay. Very serious anyway. Does, does this help you? Not really. Okay. Is it not a re- is it not anything to do with Van McCoy? Nothing to do with Van McCoy. Not to do with 70s disco? No, not to do with Sylvester McCoy either. Oh, okay. That's okay. Right. Shall I start? I think or are you is this going to carry on? No, I'll, no, we can lose it there. Okay, fine. Very, so, very entertaining, guys. Very good, very good. 1964 story bed, uh, film Bedtime Story. You remember that? No. But what you do remember is Dirty Rotten Scoundrels which yes. was, you know, based on a bedtime story. And I remember going to see Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and thinking this isn't anything like as funny as it should be. You know, it's a story of two scam artists and they have to team up together. And I, it was funny for the first 10 minutes and then after that it kind of fell down. Well, now we have The Hustle, which is a gender-reversed take on the story of uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Before, you had uh, Michael Caine, Steve Martin. Now we have Rebel Wilson, who is this kind of low-level scam artist who is on a train in which she's scamming people for the... Um, for the cost of her of her lunch of her, of her of her dinner, and she meets Anne Hathaway, who is far more kind of upmarket and a much more successful uh, con artist. Their paths cross. One thing leads to another. Hathaway reluctantly agrees to mentor uh, Wilson's character, and they decide that they will join forces against one of their wills to fleece men, but also to compete for their money and indeed affection. What do you want, Penny? I want this! Like, look at this place! I had no idea how small time I was until I met you. Teach me your sugar baby ways. Shape me into something great and richer. And why would I do that? Because who knows? I could be the partner you never knew you needed. No, thanks. I work alone. Okay, I get it. But what you're not getting is that a girl like me could make it real uncomfortable for you in this town. Just take one phone call. Hello, Interpol. Tell me, Penny. Why are women better suited to the con than men? Because we're used to faking it. It comes down to one universal truth. No man will ever believe a woman is smarter than he is. We will always be underestimated, and that is what we use. So this means you're going to teach me, aren't you? I'm teaching you now. Yes! Wait, what was that last part? I I couldn't hear you were talking into the ocean. Do the hustle. (laughs) Were you literally lining that gag up just for that? Okay, so first five or six minutes of the film is quite funny. And then completely flat lines. It becomes a vacuum of laughter-free nothingness. And it's really, really strange because I was thinking, you know, I, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, I found it to be a big disappointment. And I thought, well, you, you know, this is, this will improve on it, surely. And it doesn't. It just sits there being staggeringly unfunny. And the really surprising thing about it is... Anne Hathaway is good. Anne Hathaway can do accents. And yet Anne Hathaway, you heard Anne Hathaway's accent in that it's it's like, you know, chalk on a blackboard. Nails on a blackboard even. Chalk on a blackboard would be fine. (laughs) Stepping on eggs. Incidentally, in the new Jack Reacher novel, he says walking on eggs. Just so you know, everyone's tweeted it to me. Is that right? Walking on eggs. Um, The Rebel Wilson character, she's doing the usual kind of, you know, uh, uh, agent of chaos shtick, which I have found very funny elsewhere here. No. And it it was really, really odd that once you got beyond the, okay, the, what they've done is they've done the, you know, the central twist that they've replaced those two characters with these two characters. You just sit there thinking, when's it going to, when's it going to start getting funny again? And it, it, it is astonishing with, I know c- criticism is a very subjective thing, but there is nothing quite like sitting in a room watching a comedy film in which nobody is laughing and the film is actually including little areas for the laughter to happen in. And I mean, it's interesting, for example, if you compare this to um, Amazing Grace, which we talked about earlier on, in which everything is to do with, you know, with 
ecstasy and and response and these songs have the transcendent one you and you're there watching the audience just you know ascending to another level and then in the same day you see the hustle in which you just watch this slab of cold unfunny comedy just lie there and i mean it's very very odd because there are two very funny and very talented performers at the center of it and it i think it goes to show that comedy is really hard to direct and if you get comedy right then you're some kind of genius and if you get comedy wrong you will fall on your face faster than danny dyer standing on a rake in run for your wife <laughs> 